Okay, hello everyone. This is Mr. Farran speaking. And uh, obviously because we have a long holiday, I know that some of you are somewhat confused and maybe you feel like you have too much time on your hands. At least that's what I have in my head. I mean, I hope you feel like I hope you f I hope you understand that you have so much time right now because of the whole virus thing and because you have so much free time, you somehow feel lost. Uh, I could be mistaken, you could be just uh, wasting your time, but since we have this vacation right now, I thought I'd just make a short video and maybe uh, just help you guys get back on track and just to maybe kind of help you navigate what you should be doing uh, at the moment for EL119, okay? So I'm just going to quickly talk about my blog. Um, yeah, so for the online practice codes, I know that uh, some of you are still having problems, but it's very, very easy. Basically, you know, you, when you went to the bookstore, they gave you two pieces of paper, or they gave you two papers. One of them will have a code for the for the ebook, and the second paper will have the code for the online practice. <coughs> so after you register for the online practice, you need to put my code in, and these are the class codes. Okay, so if you if you ever get lost, just go to my blog. You'll see that I have the online practice link over here. You have to register using the code they gave you in the bookstore. And then after you register, so after you register, then you put one of these class codes in. You see here, you've got the letter C. So C is for class, of course, and the code you have should begin with the letter S for student code, okay? Uh, so yeah, please make sure you uh, please make sure you register, and you, you please make sure you also use the online practice because there are five marks for the online practice. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, because we also have a uh, because of, because of the delay in the with the with the whole virus thing, I gave you guys an extension of two weeks. So this was your uh, previous deadline for the first five files you can see it says here up updating the uh, I was actually updating the uh, the uh, the deadline for the voice recordings so it says you upload your first five files here this was your previous uh, deadline 12th of March but I've changed that to the 26th of March so I've given you all an extra two weeks to submit your first five audio recordings okay now obviously I'm I really don't know what's going to happen regarding the uh, uh, what's going to happen obviously in the future and what's going to happen when we go back to university but i'm guessing if i'm not mistaken that they will give us an extra two weeks okay so everything will be pushed for two weeks but this is only my speculation uh, obviously everything depends on what happens and uh, with the virus and if we are going to go back in two weeks time there are rumors that uh, we might get an extra an extra two weeks but that's not confirmed obviously okay so <coughs> Let me just quickly, um, okay, so I talked about the voice recordings and the course calendar. Uh, okay, before I talk about the course calendar, let me just quickly go back to my blog over here. So these are here, this is here, you have the online practice codes over here, okay, um, the class codes at the bottom. There's an interesting application called Cambly, so you can read more about it on my blog. Uh, again, if you're having problems uploading your voice recordings on LMS, you can check out this short video I made. Um, the interface might be a bit different, but the instructions are exactly the same. Okay, and yeah, if you need to, if you need to access my notes, you can always access my notes on my blog. You can find them on the right-hand side over here. Okay. So that's that. And according to the course calendar, if you remember when we first met, we talked about first impressions. And then we talked about taste and nutrition. Obviously nothing changed and you guys are still eating pizzas and burgers. So that was useless. We had our first presentation. <coughs> and then the last time I saw you, we talked about units three and four and we also had the listening quiz. So I know you're waiting for your grades. Uh, I will po probably post the grades, if not today, maybe tomorrow on my blog. Uh, yeah, so we talked about uh, first impressions, taste and nutrition, and uh, change, and of course advertising. Um, so for the online practice, you should be doing. I mean, you should. I mean, you should. You should do the exercises for the uh, the, the activities, and the exercises for units one, two, three, and four. 
Remember to focus only on the vocab, the pronunciation, and the listening exercises. Please ignore everything else. Okay? So, um, we were supposed to have uh, a presentation or presentation two uh, next week or on week five, which is from the 29th of Feb to the 5th of March. <coughs> And then the week after that, we were supposed to cover units uh, five and six. Um, so obviously, we'll have to postpone the second presentation until we get back. But for uh, units five and six, what I can do is I can just quickly go over <coughs> one of these units with you right now on the on using this video, so that when we when we when we go back to university, we don't have to cover so much. Okay. <coughs> So unit five is all about risk taking. By the way, um, this is an interesting topic for me. I, I, I personally enjoy talking about risk taking, and uh, I think when we get back to AOU, I will talk more about that. Hopefully, okay. So I won't do this now, but what I'll do is I'll just quickly talk about chapter six, which is all about world and responsibility. Okay. Um, so this is unit six, world and responsibility. Uh, I want you to think about this question. Who is responsible for your life? Who is responsible for the things that happen in your life? Who is responsible for the world, for example? Um, this is an interesting question because if you ask, if you ask most students, some, I feel like sometimes students, they tend to blame other people for their own faults. Like if you ask students, why did you fail? They will usually give you some sort of excuse. It was, a, you know, it was my teacher. It was uh, the weather wasn't good. I wasn't feeling well. I had the roof. All that kind of stuff, which is basically, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean. So I think we need to. We tend, to, we tend to blame other people for our own shortcomings, and I think we need to learn how to uh, take responsibility for our own actions. <coughs> so, how many different types of responsibilities do we have? Well, if we start with the smallest one, we have personal responsibility. And then if we, let's say, let's say you branch out and you go bigger, then we have uh, family. We are responsible for our families. We're also responsible socially. Uh, we have something called corporate social responsibility, which I'll talk about in a second. It's basically related to uh, businesses. And, uh, and uh, when, we, when you think of yourself as a consumer, how you spend your money and what you buy and so on and so forth. And the biggest one, obviously, we have is environmental. So from smallest to biggest, we have personal, family, social responsibility, corporate social, and then environmental responsibility. Let's start with the first one very, very, uh, very, very quickly. Personal responsibility basically means, um, you know, uh, who you are as a person. You are responsible for everything you do. And everything you do will have some sort of impact later on. Uh, on yourself, on the people around you, on life in general, okay? So you basically have, I mean, if you think about your life, you have a series of doors, uh, or choices if you want, and every door you open or refuse to open will have, a, will have an effect later on in life. It's similar to the domino effect or the butterfly effect. If you can imagine stacking uh, a row of uh, dominoes and you push one, and uh, if you push the first one, then the rest will follow suit. They will uh, they will fall over. It's similar to the butterfly effect, and the butterfly effect says that if the flutters of a butterfly, if if you can just imagine like how um, <coughs> if a if a butterfly uh, if if if, uh, if its wings flutter, that can cause a slight shift in the weather patterns, and eventually that can maybe cause a tornado or like some sort of uh, huge climate change. It sounds a bit far-fetched uh, because of the way I talked about it. I didn't really, I didn't really describe it well, maybe. But um, the the whole idea behind the butterfly effect is that one small change somewhere in the world can maybe have a great effect somewhere else in the world. I'm giving you just an example of just one butterfly, but you can, if you can imagine like the flutter of the wings of let's say millions of butterflies, that can maybe cause a shift in the in, in wind, for example, and that can maybe and that could maybe cause something. Uh, some some major shift in, in the climate change and so on and so forth. So just that, it's 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 really a theory called the butterfly effect. And when you think about it more deeply, uh, it starts to make sense. And we are like butterflies somehow. So everything you do will have an impact on people around you and on society, on the world in general. 
There's a very interesting quote by Martin Luther King, I believe. And he says, you are not only responsible for what you say, but also for what you do not say. So think about this for a second. You're not only responsible for what you say in life, but for also what you don't say. So the things you withhold from saying, you're also responsible for that. Take for example, um, let's say for example, you take the problems that are facing society, right? If, if no one says anything to the problems that are happening in society, it's almost like we're okay with them. Imagine you see like a young boy smoking. You imagine like you're, you're walking down the road and then like you see a young boy smoking a cigarette. He's no more than eight or nine or like say 10 years old. And if you walk past that boy and you don't say anything and I walk past that boy and I ignore him as well, and if society does that, then we're almost, it's almost like telling that boy, you know what, smoking is fine. So sometimes by not talking, by not saying something, you are, you're really having, I mean, you're, you're also responsible for that. And uh, I think it's our responsibility as human beings, as individuals, uh, to sometimes speak up when we see something wrong. So I think that's important. So this is a very interesting quote by Martin Luther King who says, we're not only responsible for what we say, but also for, for the things we don't say. And if you think about the major problems we have around the world today, I think most of the problems stem or they come from the fact that we are too silent. We are silent about the things that matter in life. <coughs> this is another interesting quote, which is, uh, uh, which is related to personal responsibility. No snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. So uh, uh, the the word avalanche is basically when you have like a, a ton of snow that falls down a mountain. So if you can imagine uh, a mountain covered in snow and then suddenly that snow kind of tumbles down the side of the mountain and uh, usually an avalanche is not a it's not a it's not a beautiful thing. It's actually a very dangerous thing and uh, avalanches destroy everything in its path. So if you have like a small village. Or if you have people climbing a mountain, then an avalanche can easily kill those people or destroy the whole village. But when you think of this quote, no, uh, no snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. And if you think of your life, we are like snowflakes somehow. And um, if, you ask the indi if you ask each and every single individual snowflake, like who was responsible for the avalanche, um, each individual snowflake will tell you, listen, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. And that's very similar to what's happening around the world. If I ask, if I ask you all, who is responsible for the chaos and the killings and the pollution that we have in the world, most of you would say it's not my fault. But collectively, as a group, we are all responsible. So this is a very interesting quote. No snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. It's very similar to us human beings, how we individually don't feel responsible for the things happening around us in life. But uh, logically speaking, we are all part of this world. We are all responsible for everything that is happening around the world. Uh, this reminds me of a very interesting commercial I once saw on TV. Uh, I think this, this took place in Lebanon. And um, you have uh, people sitting in their cars waiting in the traffic lights. And then a man walks by and he's eating a banana. And then when he's done, he just throws the banana peel on the floor. And one guy sitting in the car says, hey, man, you know, he honks the horn and says, hey, man, what are you doing? Are you, are you seriously going to throw the banana peel on the floor? And the man in Arabic says, come on, it which basically means in English, come on, I mean, am I really going to make a difference? And the truth is, yeah, we are all powerful. I mean, uh, each, uh, every person possesses some, some power, some form of power. And, uh, and as I said, collectively as a group, that power just gets magnified. So we are powerful, we are responsible. Everything you do will have, an, will have some sort of effect later on down the line. So that was the first one. The second one, or the second type of responsibility we have is family. We are responsible for our family members. Um, we, are we, are, we are obviously responsible for our parents, our siblings, uh, the people around us, our neighbors, when you think about it. When you see a picture like this, um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, like father, like son, or like mother, like daughter. 
And you have to understand that if you are a parent, you really need to be careful because everything your kids do, they will follow suit. You know, sometimes your kids might not, they might not listen to what you say, but your kids will usually follow in your footsteps. So if you have a parent who smokes, then kids are more likely going to smoke. This is obviously according to science and according to the studies they've done. Um, if parents get a divorce, then kids are more likely going to get a divorce as well. So you really have to be careful uh, if you are a mother or a father because everything you do will have some sort of impact and impression on your kids and you are like their best role model. So it's hard to get your kids to eat healthy food, for example, if you are busy eating junk food yourself. And it's hard for, for you to get your kids to read books if they, just, if, they, if they always observe you holding your phone and iPad and so on and so forth. So you are definitely responsible for your kids and for the people around you. Um, that's not, that was number two. Number three, we're talking about social responsibility. Uh, social responsibility, uh, ask yourself this question, why is it important for us to be responsible for society? Why is it important for us to be responsible for other people? Who cares about other, uh, other people? So think about this question. Do you think it's important for us to be socially responsible? Yes, no, why? Okay. Um, just to get, kind of give you some examples, we have some interesting examples from Kuwait. I think um, it's very important to be socially responsible because you are not living in a vacuum. You're not living by yourself. You're living, I mean, you're, you're part of a society. You're part of a community somehow. So it's good to be responsible for those who are less fortunate. It's good to be responsible for those who are around us because you never know. One day it could be us. It could be you in that, in that situation. So... And it's also, you know, sometimes, you know, God blesses us with extra, you know, extra money, extra clothes. And so because we have an excess of, uh, we have too much of one thing or we have extra food, for example, it's always a good idea to share what you have with those who are less fortunate. Um, even in our Holy Quran, we have uh, some interesting uh, sayings by our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. We have this saying, he is not a believer who eats to his fill, but his neighbor goes without food. So even religion tells us to be more socially conscious and socially aware of the people around us. I mean, how can you have lunch or dinner while your neighbor is basically starving next door? So this is just proof that uh, our, our religion also tells us to be socially uh, aware of what is happening around us. Another quote by our Prophet, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Again, uh, feed the hungry, visit the sick, and free the captives. So here again we have more evidence of how our religion preaches, preaches and tells us to be more socially conscious of those who are around us. And I think it's a good thing, honestly. I think it's good to have this uh, sense of community and to have this um, to have a society where we're all equal. We're all you know we all care about each other. And uh, when one when, when when one of us gets sick, or if someone you know. Uh, uh, if someone needs help, then the rest of the community stands up for that person. I think it's a, I think it's a wonderful feeling. Uh, number four is all about corporate social responsibility, and uh, this is all about uh, when you think of, when you think about businesses and how we spend our money, and so on and so forth. So um, <clears throat> think about, for example, uh, do companies treat their employees in a fair way? Are they equally treated? Um, do they have appropriate working conditions? What is the minimum wage? Do they have long working hours? Do they do they force children to work, for example? So imagine you are a consumer, right? You, we, we, I mean, we're all consumers. We all buy products. And um, think of where your money is going. Like when you pay for a product, are you like uh, are you giving money to the right company? Is that company uh, abusing its workers, right? So think about that for a second. I mean, um, why would I give my money to a company and that company is, for example, killing innocent people or destroying the environment or even killing animals? So as a consumer, you are also responsible for the money you have and for the products you buy. Because everything you buy, you're either empowering a company, you're making it more powerful, or you're actually making it weaker by not giving it your money, right? So, for example, you know, Nike was a, Nike, Nike is actually a good example. Um, with Nike, um, you know, their, their slogan is, it's, 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 uh, it's just, it's just do it. 
So imagine just do it. This is like the, 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 the logo or the slogan for Nike. Now, why would I go to Nike and give them my money and buy their products if, for example, I find out that they're actually forcing kids to work, like in this picture? So I wouldn't want to, as a consumer, I, would, I wouldn't want to maybe give my money to kids, or sorry, to, to, to this company because they are forcing kids to work. So as a consumer, if you are buying products, it's always a good idea to ask yourself, where is my money going? Okay. Uh, imagine they had a study done and they found that 50% of consumers have avoided the product based on a company's responsible reputation. So uh, the word boycott basically means when you when you avoid buying a product based on based on your principles or based on what's happening. For example, you know when you a lot of women, for example, in Kuwait, they love buying makeup, and some makeup companies they actually test on animals. And uh, if you if you've ever seen any videos or pictures uh, of how brutal it is for companies to test on animals, you will I mean you, you will never buy makeup from a company that buy that tests on animals again. It's horrific, and the animals go through a lot of pain, and they get tortured just so that you have like the right shade of lipstick, which I think is extremely selfish. So a lot of the companies that make makeup today they are cruelty free, they're uh, they're animal testing free and things like that. And uh, they will tell you, because people are more conscious, people are more aware of what's happening. And as a consumer, I don't have to buy makeup from a company that tests on animals. I can always buy my makeup from somewhere else. So imagine, because people are more empowered these days, we, uh, I mean, and we have so many options as well. You don't have to buy from a company that is torturing animals. You can always buy your products from a different company. But imagine if all of us gave our money to this company. Right, so it's almost like you're encouraging this company to to test on animals and to torture animals, whereas if you withhold your money, if you don't give them your money, you're actually again this just shows you your power, because companies want to make profit. Companies want your money, so if you don't give them your money, you're basically telling them that I don't agree with your practices, I don't agree with your policies and your animal testing, and if you don't stop, I will never give you my money again. But most of us, uh, I, I guess, I, I don't think I don't think we're that aware of what's happening, and I think we should educate ourselves, and we should be more conscious of w of where our money is going, right? Uh, again, so this is just one example. Uh, if you if you check the labels you have on, let's say your lotions or creams or makeup, sometimes you might find a, a little message that looks like this: "This product is not tested on animals," because again, as a consumer. Today, I will not. I will not support any company torturing animals or human beings or destroying the environment for that. For that reason, okay. Now, I want to just give you a simple, let's say, a simple exercise to do. I want you to imagine that you are the head of this company. You are the CEO. You are the big boss of Apple, okay. And I want you to imagine, because of the poor working conditions you have and the low pay, your employees start committing suicide, okay. So what would you do? Imagine you are the boss of Apple and because of the poor working conditions that you have and the very low pay, your employees start committing suicide, right? So how would you deal with the situation and what would you do? Would you, for example, number one, increase their salary? Or would you, number two, improve their working conditions? Or number three, ignore them, just simply ignore them? Or would you, number four, simply just fire them, okay? So choose one of them in your head, and I want you to please be honest, okay? Okay, so you've all chosen something, hopefully by now. I want you to imagine that this is actually not really an exercise, this is actually, a, uh, unfortunately, a, a true story. This happened back in 2012, and this is the headline from one of the newspapers, it says, Apple faces fresh questions after another apparent suicide. So imagine... Um, several people uh, working for Apple, the, the ones who were working in the factories building the phones and iPads, they started actually committing suicide because of the terrible conditions. So what did Apple do? What do you think? How did they deal with the situation? How did Apple deal with the situation of people committing suicides? Okay, Imagine, and this is true, it sounds very very strange, but unfortunately it's very very true, it says, Apple to hang nets 
after workplace suicides. Imagine, um, I mean, like, people were actually killing themselves. They were jumping from the top of the roof or the buildings in the, the ones who were working in Apple because of the terrible working conditions and the very low pay, right? And imagine, imagine that um, what Apple did was they actually started to hang nets. They actually put some nets so that they, so that people don't actually die. Can you imagine? This is insane. And uh, I, you have to ask the question, is this ethical? Is this like the right thing to do? Obviously, for me, I think it's horrible. Uh, I think instead of helping these people and instead of giving them some sort of therapy or improving their conditions, they just simply put some nets, which is which is absurd. I just think I think it's um, it doesn't make sense. Instead of spending money putting nets, why not use that money and help the people, right? And the last one we have is environmental responsibility. Okay, environmental responsibility. Now look at this picture. Look at I mean this picture used to be a beautiful scene. This is an example of water pollution. Can you imagine eating fish from this place? Like imagine like you go to like a fast food restaurant and then you ask the guy, oh, where's this fish, you know, where's this fish from? And then they show you this picture. It's a horrible picture. And if you, if you can imagine how this started, this probably started when one person threw one piece of garbage in the corner and you know, th with, with time this accumulated and now you have this huge, ugly pile of garbage in the sea. So this is an example of water pollution. Uh, obviously, uh, you kill all sorts of life in, in such an environment. So the fish, I mean, it's going to be hard for fish to survive in such an environment. You've got uh, the probability of uh, increased, uh, you have uh, the probability of uh, diseases and bacteria and viruses uh, increasing in such an environment. Uh, we have an example of uh, air pollution over here. So you have factories that pump uh, toxic chemicals into the air which obviously affects our breathing and the air we breathe and that's why today we have more cases of asthma and breathing problems uh, we have something called global warming where the earth gets hotter and when the when the earth gets hotter uh, the ice in the north and south poles they me you know they melt and when they melt obviously we have more water which can increase the chances of floods this is an example of uh, deforestation. Um, deforestation is basically where companies cut down trees to build more room or to build space for companies, factories, warehouses, and so on and so forth. And obviously, trees are extremely important, not because they're only beautiful, but because they give us, you know, air. Obviously, um, they give us shelter, they give us fruits, and they're also obviously homes for animals and, rod and rodents and insects and so on and so forth. I found this interesting quote online. It says, the humans are the only creatures that on earth that will cut down trees, make paper, and then write safe trees on them. So it's a bit ironic when you think about it. So you cut down trees, we make paper from the trees, and then we write on the paper, save the trees. So instead of doing that, just don't cut the trees down. That makes more sense. And of course we have, uh, it's important to always uh, reuse, reduce, and recycle. Um, instead of, um, for example, uh, let's take paper as an example, right? Instead of cutting down more trees to make more paper, you can always like recycle your books. So we can take the old paper and then through a chemical process, they can, they remove everything and then they make new paper and we can use this new paper, uh, for future books and so on and so forth, instead of cutting down new trees. And uh, I think you've seen these before. There are, I think, in certain um, in certain places around Kuwait, you will always find something like this. These are like little recycling bins, and it's interesting because you can see on one side it says newspapers and magazines and plastic bottles, and I think you have a glass on the other side. So I think recycling is very important. Um, you can find these uh, bins. You can find similar bins in uh, in the avenues as well. I've seen them before. So instead of throwing all the garbage into one place, you find uh, different materials being separated. And I think it's a good idea. I also found this picture online, which I think is, is funny. Most people don't understand it, but you, f you have these two men on a raft and they're lost at sea. And then they see some garbage uh, in the water and they, they're like, hey, civilization. Civilization, you know, in Arabic means hadara. 
And when you think of civilization, you think of technology, you think of advancement, you think of something which is good. But they saw garbage and they're like, hey, civilization. So they knew that human beings are close by because we leave a ton of garbage wherever we go. Uh, I also thought I'd share this interesting quote with you. Um, the quote says, The earth does not belong to us, and we can't abuse it and do with it as we please. It belongs to the future generations, and how we treat it today will determine how they live tomorrow. Do you agree with this quote? What do you think? So, um, yeah, by the way, the person who wrote this quote is uh, someone famous. I think you know him very well. Yeah, uh, and that's it for this unit, basically. Um, uh, as always, if you download my notes from my blog, you will get a list of words, uh, phrases, and quotes. Again, don't memorize anything. Um, just keep this list with you, because, uh, as I said, for the... For the final exam, for the midterm or final exam, we will ask you to talk about uh, the ideas we talked about in the units. And as always, I'll give you a few short videos to watch that will give you hopefully more information about the theme of Unit 6, which is all about uh, the world and responsibility. And they're all very short, interesting uh, videos you can watch on YouTube. And uh, that's about it. Thank you for your time, and yeah, enjoy your vac enjoy the rest of your vacation. By the way, um, this is something I, I think you, sh you, you girls should do, or you guys should do together. Maybe take the themes and take the um, take the ideas we have in the book and uh, discuss them with your friend, right? So, for example, uh, if I again, you know, we talked about. Uh, we have the first. Let's say we have we we're gonna have we're supposed to cover six units before the midterm, before the midterm exams. Why not take? Why not take, for example, um, the themes or the ideas from these units one, two, three, four, five, and six, and just talk to your friend about it, right? Because you have a long you have a long vacation, and the best thing to do is again the whole point of this course is just to talk. I want you to talk and share to share your ideas. So I would suggest get together with your friend or stick like you know or like a, let's say like in a, in a WhatsApp group and share your ideas together. What do you think of risk taking? What do you think of the world and responsibility? So maybe call a friend or send a voice note to somebody and get together if you can, if possible, and um, yeah, share your ideas together. Remember, I want you to th I want you to think, I want you to talk, I want you to share your ideas with one another. And uh, the more you, obviously, the more English you use, the better your English will be in the future, okay? So thank you so much. I hope you had fun, and I will see you hopefully in class, okay? Bye-bye.